The other day, I was in meeting with a client going over some business details and they made this statement to me. Making a video isn't that hard. I don't see why it takes so much time and money. Why can't I just use my phone? You know, a car is pretty simple too. You just turn the key and drive. That is, until you pop open the hood. There's thousands of parts in here that all have to be intricately placed and programmed to function properly. You can see why cars cost thousands of dollars. Imagine trying to do all of this by yourself if you aren't a trained mechanic and make something that actually works. Even if you are a trained mechanic, it could still take months or even years to do. The same thing is true of filmmaking and video production. To make a film that's actually enjoyable to watch and keeps your attention, there's thousands of moving parts involved that can take months or even years to develop properly. So what I want to do in this video is walk you through the whole process of what it takes to produce a film from development to distribution. Film production can be broken up into four parts. Development, financing, production, and distribution. I'm going to go over a huge range of information in minimal detail in order to help you get a grasp on each step of the overall filmmaking process, but if you want to go deeper on any given detail, I'll make sure to include links to other videos up in the right hand corner of the screen for you to learn more. The first step in the filmmaking process is development, and that all starts with the idea. There's all kinds of ways that writers and filmmakers come up with ideas for their films. Everyone has to develop their own methods of generating creativity. And don't get too excited about your first ideas. The best way to have a good idea is to have a lot of ideas. Once you have a good idea, you want to start putting together comps before you start writing the script. Putting together comps means making a list of movies similar to the one you want to make, figuring out how much it costs to make those films, and then how much money those films made in revenue. This will give you a good idea of how much your film could stand to make, and by extension, how much you should consider spending to make the film so that you can still make a profit on its exhibition. This is the first step in good market research, which will continue throughout the filmmaking process. Once you have good comps, you're ready to start writing your screenplay. Well actually you're ready to write a log line, then a treatment, and then when you get your first draft done, promptly throw it in the trash. Generally, a script will need rewritten from the ground up multiple times, along with an additional process of edits and revisions before it's ever ready to get shot. And in addition to your script, you may also need to get storyboards, mood boards, and other materials put together, though often some of these things can wait for pre-production. This all may seem like a hassle, but it's absolutely worth it before putting the time and money into production. The last part of the development process that you'll want to account for is making a plan for distribution. If you're wanting to make a film that's profitable, you need to start thinking about how you're going to sell your movie from the very beginning. We'll touch more on this when we go over the distribution phase of filmmaking, but you absolutely need to be planning from it from the very inception of the film. The second major part of producing a film is financing or funding, and just about every filmmaker starts at the same level, no budget filmmaking. You can make a film with no money and no contacts, and just about every filmmaker that has ever become successful started there. Your cast is working for the credit and to add to their reel. Crew is working for the experience or just for fun, and no one is getting paid. Equipment is limited, maybe a low-end camera with a few lights and a mic, maybe an iPhone with a desk lamp. At this level of production, your main expense will be feeding your cast and crew, and you should always feed your cast and crew. Once you build up your skills, experience, and portfolio, you'll likely want to start working on bigger projects where you can pay for better equipment and locations, reimburse your cast and crew, and actually market your film. There's six main ways that films get financed. If you personally are in a good financial situation, you may be able to float some of these costs yourself. Or if you've already had a few financial successes from previous movies, you may be able to roll the profits onto the next project. Otherwise, you may want to look into getting some investors. Film production is historically a high risk investment with over 50% of films never getting their budget back. So you definitely want to have done your homework in development and have good comps and a distribution plan to pitch to investors to show that you'll be one of those ones that makes its money back. And some investors will want some equity in the project while others just want to recruit their money for an additional share of the revenue. You may want to consider shooting one or two scenes from your films as POCs as they tend to have more impact for investors than a thorough pitch deck. If you aren't pitching your film to investors, you could always go the crowdfunding route. Though this type of funding usually comes with an added responsibility of marketing your campaign to the public and delivering the perks that you promised to the investors. Alternatively, you could produce the film on loans, though I highly discourage it. Some banks will give you a loan if you have a good enough pitch, or what many filmmakers do is just put all their expenses on credit cards. But if you finance your films through loans or credit cards, you're just risking your own personal money that you don't even have. And in an industry where only 2% of 
of independent films ever get any sort of distribution or recruitment whatsoever, and only about 50% of those actually end up making their money back eventually, I can't recommend going in this direction. The dream is to get your movie pre-sold to a distributor, which is when a distributor agrees to acquire your film before it's even made. But this really is only an option if you've already had a few successful films. What I personally do to finance the short films I've made is by doing video production work for clients and corporate agencies and then taking a portion of those profits and investing them into production. If you have a skill set to create a film, you likely can leverage it to create some cash flow, which you can then throw into some projects like these. Once your movie has been developed and financed, you're ready to move on to the fun part production. But in reality, only about 10% of films actually make it to production. Most are scrapped in development or can't find funding. But if you do make it to production, there's still a lot to be done before you ever step foot on set. In pre-production, you've got to book your cast and crew, schedule your film, budget the production, draft up any storyboards and shot lists you don't already have done, and get your locations nailed down. You'll want to set up an LLC or other business entity specifically for the film if it's a feature length film to protect yourself legally. You'll want to run script clearance, copyright your screenplay, maintain a healthy and clean chain of title, and consult both a lawyer and CPA or other business professional to make sure that you're covering your bases and won't hit any problems during production. Then you shoot the film. Lights, camera, action, and don't forget to feed your crew. Make sure you capture high quality sound, which believe it or not, is the most important part of your movie. Better to have a good mic placed correctly than an expensive camera. Feature films may shoot for two to three months, even extending into a year or more for some productions. If you're making an independent film for less than $500,000 without a studio, I'd recommend stretching production out over five to six months, shooting one to two days a week to ensure that you're able to capture the highest quality footage possible without too much strain on you or those working with you. Once your movie is shot, you'll go on to post. You'll start this during the production, sorting the footage on the same day you shoot it, and if possible, doing rough cuts of the scenes, which are generally referred to as dailies. After production concludes, you'll throw your wrap party, you'll cut your film together, and more than likely, it'll have taken on a whole new life from the script you originally had. You may have to schedule a few reshoots if it's not churning out the way you rent it, and you'll almost certainly have to cut out some of the scenes as you iron out the pacing. Then you color the film, add fully in sound effects, put together a music score, and spend days trying to get your credits put together. And once that's all done, you'll start showing it to test audiences to get feedback on the film. Based on that feedback, you may have to do some more reshoots, cut some more scenes, change the music score or a number of other things to make sure that your film is marketable. And just like that, your movie is finished. Most people find that production is the fun part, but personally, I find distribution to be the most exciting because this is where you get paid. Unfortunately, most independent filmmakers go through a huge process of development, financing, and production without giving a serious thought to their distribution strategy. So when they get to the distribution phase, even though they have a movie made, they're 10 steps behind and have to figure out how to market and distribute their finished film from scratch. As I said before, distribution starts in development, and you should absolutely have clearly defined realistic goals and strategies in place when production is finished. Do you want to self-distribute or license the rights to a distributor? Are you going to try to go for theatrical release or go straight to VOD? Based on your comps, what distributors do you want to try to get signed with? Do you want to run the film festival circuit? These are the questions you should be thinking about. Historically, theatrical exhibition has been an important part of financial recruitment. The perfect release will make its marketing and production budget back in the first weekend before any negative review get out that would discourage people from watching, though this rarely happens. Instead, the theatrical release is usually a loss leader, meant to drive home video, VOD, and ancillary revenue streams. So don't think that theatrical release is your one-way ticket to big money. But with the rise of VOD, video on demand services such as Netflix, Hulu, Tubi TV, Peacock, and Amazon Prime, theatrical distribution is less fruitful, though by no means is it dead. VOD is a powerful distribution engine, one that makes it difficult to even mention home video when it comes to independent distribution. It can be broken broken up into three categories, SVOD, TVOD, and AVOD, which I'll define on screen if you want to pause and read about. Probably the biggest decision that you'll have to make about distribution is whether you're going to self-distribute or try to get a deal with a distributor who will get your movie into theaters and VOD platforms for you. If you self-distribute, you may or may not want to pursue a theatrical release. A lot of independent films get put on AVOD platforms like YouTube or 2B TV. Instead of a distributor, you might want to consider working with an aggregator like FilmHub, who will just get your films put on select VOD platforms for you. If you want to sign with a distributor, then you need to stay vigilant because many independent distributors 
distributors are just looking for small filmmakers to scam and rip off with fees and blatantly stolen revenue. You'll need an entertainment lawyer to help you navigate the rough terrain and find a good distributor who isn't looking to scam you. Get an MG if you can, fight for a good revenue share of about 70% or higher for you, and make sure there's some kind of intelligent limit on the marketing spend of the distributor. Regardless of if you're self-distributing the film or signing with a distributor, you'll need to be heavily involved with the marketing of your film, which should be based on additional market research. Most successful films spend the equivalent of at least half of their production budget on marketing. So if they spend two million on the movie, they'll spend another million marketing it. And many times, especially on low to mid budget films, they'll actually spend more to market the movie than they did to make it. So they'll spend 30 to 40 million marketing a movie that they made for 10 million. And when it comes to prints and ads, it's best to only spend 5% of your budget on creative materials like posters and trailers. The rest of the spend should go to media buy, like social media ads, billboards, and other creative marketing outlets. You'll probably also want a website, social media pages, and an email list to promote your film, all of which can be done for very little to no money if your film is a no-budget production. These are essential parts of marketing a film if you actually want people to see it. But don't be afraid to get creative and branch out with how you get your marketing materials in front of people. The last thing you want to consider when it comes to film distribution is how to create ancillary revenue streams. It's great to make some actual money off the exhibition of the film, but in reality, most films don't make their money back by people paying to watch it. Instead, they make their money back through merchandising, book sales, music distribution, and other revenue streams related to the film. Think about how many parents started buying Elsa dresses and stuffed Olafs after taking their kids to see Frozen. And think about all the Star Wars Lego sets that get sold every year. That's where filmmakers really make their money. So, give some thought as to how you can leverage your film to create some revenue streams from your target audience. Can you write a book to accompany your inspirational drama film? Or sell masks inspired by the monster of your horror film? And if you get a custom music score made for your movie, don't forget to monetize that as well. These are all important parts of getting your film seen by the most amount of people possible and recouping your capital so you can go make the next one. Just like building a car, making a film or any video can be a long and complex process where all of the odds are stacked against you. But that absolutely doesn't mean that you can't do it. I believe that you have great things inside of you that can be released through filmmaking regardless of the equipment or contacts that you have access to. To help you get started, I've put together a free step-by-step -step guide on how to fund and produce your next film in less than seven days with nothing but a turkey sandwich. You can get access to it by hitting the first link in the description below. The best way to improve your filmmaking abilities and start producing better films is to just get out there and start doing it. Go shoot something ASAP. That's how you actually grow and get better at each step of the process, by actually doing it. Don't worry about your equipment and whatnot. Your camera doesn't make a great video. You do.